In this video, I want to discuss the concept of currency options. Now, some of you may have studied stock options, which are basically the same thing as currency options. Options give the holder the right, but not the obligation to buy something if it's a call option, or sell something if it's a put option. In the case of stock options, that uh, would be a share of stock. In the case of currency options, it happens to be uh, units of the foreign currency. Okay, And the price that you can buy or sell at is referred to as the strike or exercise price. And options expire, so there's a specific time period that you can use these in. All right, one good example of an option that many of you are familiar with is insurance. If you happen to have a car, you um, are required to have auto insurance. Now, if you get into an accident, do you have to file a claim? Well, not necessarily. If you just have a little fender bender with your carport, you don't necessarily have to file a claim. If it's an $800 worth of damage to your car, you have a $500 deductible, you're thinking to yourself, well, I could file a claim and the insurance company would give me $300, but you know what? They're probably going to raise my rates by more than that. I'll just pay for it out of my own pocket. So you just you don't exercise your option. Now, options can be very useful um, for both hedging and speculation. So let me take a quick look at the definitions of these two things. In the case of hedging, or a hedger is somebody who has positions in two markets and are trying to protect themselves. For example, a firm that will need to purchase Japanese yen in the spot market may want to use an option to protect themselves against an unfavorable move in the yen dollar exchange rate. So if they're going to need to buy yen so that they can buy something from Japan, okay, they're importing things into the U.S., then if the exchange rate moves in the wrong direction, it could be more expensive. So they can use an option to protect themselves. Speculators, on the other hand, are people who are just making a bet on the move in one direction. So these aren't people who need to buy Japanese yen or need to sell pound sterling. These are people who are just betting on the direction. And if they think the, um, the exchange rate is going to move, the yen dollar exchange rate, the yen is going to be more expensive in terms of dollars, then they'll make a bet that makes a profit for them if that happens. All right, so let's take a look at some payoff pictures. These may look familiar to you if you've actually studied stock options. So in this case, this is the payoff picture for a call option, which gives you the right to buy at the exercise price. And we're going to assume the exercise price here is $1.50 for one pound sterling. And for the privilege of being able to buy at $1.50, you have to pay a two-cent premium. So your payoff picture looks like this. It's uh, Sometimes we refer to it as a hockey stick um, type graph. You start two cents in the hole because you have to pay two cents in this premium. And if the price is below $1.50, remember this allows you to buy at $1.50, then you just allow the option to expire worthless. If the, if the um, exchange rate were $1.40 to buy one pound sterling and you needed one pound sterling, why pay $1.50 when you can just go on the marketplace and pay $1.40? Um, another key part of this graph is what's referred to as the break-even point. Because you paid two cents for this option, the price of the pound has to rise to at least $1.52 for you to break even. If it rises above to $1.52, then you'll start to see some positive profits. For example, if the price of uh, um, the pound went up to $1.60, you could buy it for $1.50, sell it for $1.60, and you paid a two cent premium, so you'd make an eight cent profit. If someone is buying call options on pounds, there must be someone writing or selling options on pounds, and their payoff diagram is going to be the mirror image of the person who bought the call option. Because this is a zero-sum game, so any money that is made by the person who purchased the call option is a loss to the person 
who wrote the call option. In this case, this person starts two cents ahead because they received two cents, and as long as the price is a below or the price is below a dollar fifty, they get to keep the two cent premium. As the price rises above a dollar fifty, they start to lose money. And a break-even point is the same break-even point as before dollar fifty-two. So you can see that um, in this case, every dollar or every penny that this person makes is a penny that the person who bought the call option loses. The other two diagrams I want to show you are for put options. This is the payoff for owning a put option on British pounds. And in this case, we'll use the same exercise price of $1.50. Here we're going to say the premium is three cents. Now, a put option allows you to sell at $1.50. And if the price as long as the price is above $1.50, if you have a pound, uh, one pound sterling to sell, there's no reason to sell it for $1.50 if you could sell it for $1.62. But if the price falls below $1.50, then being able to sell it to somebody at $1.50 has value. Again, you start three cents in the hole. The break even point here is going to be $1.47. That is, the price has to fall by three cents in order for you to break even. The maximum profit here is going to be $1.47. And the reason it's $1.47 is the worst that can happen is, or the best thing that can happen to the person who owns this put option is a pound goes to zero, so you can buy the pounds for zero and sell them for $1.50, but you paid three cents for this, so the most you can make is $1.47. And of course, if somebody owns pound sterling, they're, uh, a pound sterling put, someone has to be writing those put options. And again, the same mirror image we had before. Okay, They make money as long as the price is above $1.50. Break even is the same $1.47. The worst they can do is lose $1.47. All right, let's take a look at a few examples of uh, possible uses of options, currency options. Okay, For a multinational corporation, there are a number of uses for call options. Um, they can hedge payables. So suppose a U.S. firm purchases goods from a British firm and is required to make payments in pounds sterling. The firm's worried that the cost of pounds will rise from $1.50 to $1.58 if the firm purchases a call option with an exercise price of $1.50. That is, they'll be able to buy the pounds at $1.50, um, and they're going to pay a two cent premium. They'll be locked into this $1.50 during um, this period until the option expires. Okay. If the exchange rate does rise to $1.58, they'll still only be paying $1.50 for the pounds, and um, but they'll be out two cents because they paid a two cent premium. Okay? Much in the same way you have auto insurance or homeowners insurance. If you have homeowners insurance and you know you aren't robbed, there's no damage done to your house by you know um, fire, then you know what? You lose the premium. Okay? But if something happens, you get back some money. And that's basically what you're doing here. All right. If the exchange rate is a, is below a dollar fifty, then the firm just throws away the option and loses the premium. So that's the case of the homeowner's policy, where nothing happened to your house. You basically just tossed away your policy. Okay? You paid, you know, five hundred dollars for your homeowner's insurance, and if nothing happened, you just lose the five hundred dollars. Um, Options might be preferred to forward or futures contracts, which can also be used to hedge um, foreign currency risk, because they don't, they are not, you're not required to use them if it's not beneficial. So in the case of forward and futures contracts, which I'll discuss in a different video, you are required to fulfill your obligation. So if the exchange rate moves in an unfavorable direction, okay, you still have to you you still have to make or take delivery. You're still going to lose some money there. In the case of the option, you just lose the premium. All right, let's take a look at a couple other examples. 
um, to hedge project bidding. You can lock in your costs. So, for example, Ogden Industries, a Maryland-based company, is bid on a project sponsored by the German government. If the bid's accepted, Ogden is going to need approximately 1 million euros in German materials and services, but it doesn't know if its bid's going to be accepted for three months. Um, if, it, if the exercise price on euros is $1.15 and the call premium is two cents, then the maximum amount Ogden will need uh, to purchase the euros using the call option is $1.15 million. That is $1.15 per euro times the 1 million euros. Okay, and again, they will all also have paid that two cent premium. But again, you're not doing this to maximize profits, you're doing this to reduce risk. All right, if the euro spot rate is below the exercise price, that is, you know, the price here is let's say a dollar ten, then there's no reason to use the option to buy at a dollar fifteen. Just go in the open market and buy it at a dollar ten and just let the call option expire worthless. All right. The nice thing about this is that even if the bid isn't accepted, it turns out that Ogden might make some money if the uh, spot rate exceeds the exercise price. So it's possible they might make some money even if they don't get the contract. Um, another example would be to hedge target bidding of a possible acquisition. The same, basically the same example we had before. A U.S. firm has bid to acquire a French firm. Uh, like the project bidding, you know, they're able to lock in their dollar cost. Okay, they may not know if they're going to receive the um, if their um, bid is accepted, so they can use that to lock in um, what they've done. All right, and again, if the exchange rates move in an unfavorable direction, they can just throw the call option away. If it turns out that they're bid for this uh, other company is not accepted, they might still make money on the option. And one last example, this is a put option example. Um, suppose Rosen Enterprises is a US company that's exporting software to a French technology firm. The French firm will be paying in euros and they'll be paying two million euros. At the current exchange rate of a dollar twenty, Rosen expects to receive two point four million dollars. Um, okay, they're gonna for every euro they exchange it for a dollar twenty, they'll get two point four million dollars. Um, okay, Rosen's concerned that the euro could fall in value to a dollar ten, which would reduce the amount of dollars they receive to two point two million. That would be a dollar ten times the two million euros. Okay. In this case, Rosen could buy a put option with an exercise price of, say, $1.20 for three cents. This would allow them to sell their euros for $1.20 regardless of what the price is. If the price is above $1.20, they can just allow the option to expire worthless and lose the three cents. Okay. If it turns out that the um, exchange rate changes to a dollar ten or dollar five, then being able to sell at a dollar twenty will be very valuable. Okay, so these are a few examples of how you can use uh, foreign currency options to hedge risk and also you can use it for speculation.